hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Boring Objects. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. The purpose of this podcast is to bore your brain and bore your mind so that you can relax, switch off and if you choose maybe even drift off to sleep. Each recording I choose a different object to focus on and then I talk about it. I do also have other podcasts that you may be interested in. I have Let Me Bore You to Sleep which is I guess a longer version of this where I talk about random just talk about nothing really for an hour every day I have deep sleep whisper <laughs> hypnosis podcast I have the relax and sleep hypnosis daily podcast I have the relax no, stress and pain relief podcast there's also Jason's bedtime story story time I just got hiccups I think so check them out if if I haven't bored you to sleep already, <laughs> telling you about them. So now, today I am going to talk about plugs. Now I've been using plugs since I was a child. And I, th I would say they are pretty much uh, a lot safer than they used to be because when I was young I used to get electric shocks from plugs now and then which was a bit surprising because my father was an electrician and he rewired the house and you know, he was in charge of the safety of the electrics within the house that we lived, the family home. So I was kind of, you know, thinking back to it, I do wonder how come I did get so many electric shocks. <laughs> it's a bit weird, really. And I think my dad must have... Um, got very tired of doing stuff you know because he worked so hard because I was always nominated to you know unplug things and plug things in so it's like the television needs plugging in or uh, the vacuum cleaner or the whatever it might be maybe the lawnmower and my dad would always like call say like, Jason we well, used to call me son um, I'm not sure if he knew my name but he called me over and he said can you plug this in please and as I was walking towards you know the plug socket I'd hear him giggling so I don't know um, if there's any anything in that I guess he was just a happy happy man and he was enjoying the the, the build up to mowing the lawn I guess it was he was excited about it. But I remember once, you know, he, he called me up. He actually phoned up the house and he said, uh, can I meet him at this address? And I said, what, what's the address? He said, oh, I'm doing, I'm rewiring someone's house. I was wondering if you could come over. I said, what for? He said, oh, I've got a plug that needs plugged in, plugging in. And I said, Dad, are you, wh why would you want me to come all the way from home 
to the next town because that's where it was just to plug something in and my, my dad said oh go on please I said okay and I did and I can't believe it again I got an electric shock it was uh, I thought at one, at one point I was going to end up having uh, superpowers uh, but that, that never never happened but I struggled it was quite weird because in school we did learn how to wire a plug because uh, there used to be these, was it like brown cables and yellow cable and a green cable and a blue cable and a red cable. There was these different wires that went in from the wire into the bottom of the plug socket plastic thing. Although I think back then plugs weren't the whole plug socket wasn't that made of metal I can't remember and I don't know and I remember um, struggling to just do it it just didn't it didn't come naturally to me uh, anything electrical just didn't seem to be something that I could really get my head around for some reason which may seem surprising considering my dad was an electrician but I just had no aptitude for it um Beside, I was scared of heights and spiders at the time. And he he said to me, uh, I remember because I had two other brothers, and my oldest brother said he asked my oldest brother because he was about fifteen at the time, and he said to my older brother. Are you going to um, come into the business with me and be an apprentice with me and we can be father and son, you know, keep it in the family business? And my brother said, oh, I'm thinking about it. But right now, um, I'm watching football. So maybe we can talk about it after the football has finished because I'd quite like to focus on the task that I have decided to participate in, which is watching the football on the television. And my dad said, OK, son. So again, I'm not sure if you knew his name either. And then my dad asked my younger brother. In fact, my younger brother said, my old, he was my older brother, but younger than my oldest and he said, Dad, can, can I be an apprentice man with you as well? And my dad said, um, maybe, because he was only about 13. My dad said, well, it's a few years away. You've still got another three years, but that would be great because we'd like to, you know, as I said, I'd like to keep it in the family. And with you and your brother, that would be great because we could, um, maybe you could pass it on to your children as well, son. And and then I, I, I sort of said, well, Dad, what, what about me? And everyone started laughing. And I thought, well, that's a bit rude. It's a bit rude. Why are you laughing? And they say, well, you, you can't even put a plug in without electrocuting yourself. I said, yeah. But at least I my socks are the same as each other and they're not odd socks. 
and my brother said, well, neither of mine. What, what is the point? I said, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something. Um, I did think of something, a really good put down, but it was last month, so it's a little bit late. Uh, it was basically, well, you smell. That was that's what I was going to say. Would have been brilliant. If only I thought about it at the time, 40 years ago. So, uh, it seemed to be almost set in stone that I wasn't going to be an electrician. Which seemed a little, uh, I don't know, to me, it seemed a little bit, a little bit rude in a way to discount me just based on the the couple of house fires that I caused. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that. But it was an accident. I didn't realise that electricity and water didn't mix. It wasn't my fault. But I still, even now, having learnt to put a plug together, to wire a plug from uh, being at school, I still have ended up getting it wrong and I don't know how because it's so easy. Well, for those that do it right, I guess. It's easy if you do it wrong until, you know, the shock comes. But now the the plugs seem to be a lot safer than they used to be. And it seems it for example the last time I wired a plug was for a bedside lamp and when I plugged it in the lamp exploded set fire to the bed my girlfriend wasn't very happy she never did like being woken up so I didn't really I don't know how I did that wrong because plugs are a lot easier now to to do. I mean there was a time when plugs would come separate in a package. You'd have you'd have the plug separate to the wire and you'd have to wire you'd have to connect the plug to the wire in order to use the electrical item but now the plugs are all connected and so many plugs now of especially for electrical things the plug is almost uh, foldable like a foldable plug like a deck chair almost but you can't sit in it um, I wouldn't want a deck chair like a plug because that would be uncomfortable. But now they're quite interchangeable and you can use the same plug sometimes to uh, charge a phone or charge headphones or to, uh, you know, to, to power a laptop, all kinds of things. And there's no wiring required. Now I'm not sure if they have fuses or not. But because I didn't know about fuses. Until my neighbour told me. Um, my toaster. Broke. And. The reason I. Well every time. Not every time, because at one point it did work. 
but it got to the point when whenever I put toast or bread into the toaster the whole flat would short circuit again you know 40 years ago I would have got electrocuted but now things just sort of short circuit on me maybe maybe that's my superpower electricity is allergic to me wow that's amazing <laughs> it's amazing whoa anyway i my friend said to me let me have a look at it and i said why are you talking like that he said what do you mean why am i talking like that i said you don't normally talk like that he said oh okay sorry i thought i'd just test out a new way of talking uh fancy a new accent i said this is not the time this is serious i'm hungry and my toast is not working I need to eat and he said well you could eat bread I said I don't want to eat bread I want toast he said well, what about breakfast cereal you've got plenty there have you got milk in the fridge I said I have plenty of milk and I do have breakfast cereal but that's not the point I've got my heart set on toast I've been looking forward to it for 10 minutes and I don't want to disappoint myself he said, I think you're really going a little bit overboard with your toast fetish. I, I got so angry. I said, it's not a fetish. It's a lifestyle. And he said, well, we have to agree to disagree. I said, no, I actually, I actually disagree with your uh, choice to try to agree to disagree. I disagree with it. I disagree and he said do you want help with a toaster or what and I said yeah I would like I would like a bit of help please and he said well you got need to start being a bit nicer I said shut up what are you talking about being nice it's such a little bit I am nice he said there see you're just being rude to me I said I'm never rude by the way have you had a bath this week and he said, see, why, why are you saying stuff like that? I, I said, but I just want, I'm just, I get grumpy when I haven't had my toast. He said, really, you need to see a doctor. I said, you need to see a doctor about your smelly head. He said, he said, that's, start laughing. He said, smelly head, what are you on about? I said, I don't know. I think my blood sugar level has gone down need the toast now and he said okay and I explained to him what was going on I explained the details of the um, when I would put the bread into the slots of the toaster and it's a special toasty bread. It's actually got, it's called toasty. Yet, the bread's too big to actually go into the slots. Which is kind of, um, it's an ironic, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. And he said, well, it might be the, oh, what's that thing you put in it? A thingy and I said a thingy and he said no that the thing that goes in the plug and it if it goes if it if it breaks or goes it cuts off everything it's there for your safety I said okay so for everyone's safety and he said no it was invented for your safety I said what do you mean he said, didn't your dad tell you? I said, what? 
He said, your dad invented it. Um, it's basically, um, he did a lot of experimentation, apparently, when he, when you were young. And he discovered a way to make plugs safe. And that's that's why he's got that. He lives on a yacht now. Did you did you not wonder about that? I said no. I just I figured he likes yachts. He likes to go to sleep bobbing up and down. And I said, what is the thing that's in a plug? And uh, I can't remember what he said. I forget what it is. You know, it's a little long. It's not long, but it is long, but it's, um, I forget, I forget what it's called, but it's, he said that might have broken, so you need to get some more. I said, don't, don't you have any? He said, no. I said, you have plugs though, don't you? He said, yeah. He said, well, I said, well, can I have, can't you give me one of your plugs or the, the thingy out of your plug? He said, you mean the fuse? And I said, yeah, the fuse. It's almost as if I Googled it while I was talking. Um, and he said, well, no, then my stuff won't work. And I said, I don't mind. He said, but I mind. I want things. I want my stuff to work. If I give you the fuse out of my plugs or one of my plugs, then that thing won't work. I said, you're very selfish. And he said, oh, you made a funny noise when you said selfish. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you said you're very selfish. <coughs> like that. I said, I don't know. It's just just the way I, way I talk. He said, oh, okay. I said, can't you give me a fuse, please? He said, no. And I took this opportunity for a pun. I said, are you refusing me a fuse? And we laughed. We rolled around laughing for 41 seconds exactly. And then we both jumped back onto our feet. And he said, you need to just order some. Why don't you order some from, uh, you know, online? And I said, oh, wait a minute, I do actually have some, I think. So I went into the storage cupboard and I pulled out a box. And I had about a hundred of them in a box, all different types. I forgot all about it. And he put the fuse in the plug. And he didn't have to take the plug apart. He basically just, the plug, the fuse came out of the bottom of the plug and he put the pl another fuse back in and the toaster worked now had I known about because the fuse being broken kept tripping the the electric box so all the lights would go off and everything and I have to try and find my way around and I'd be in the darkness of the storage cupboard trying to find the right um, the thing to flick and then after <clears throat> a few few months of doing this I realized there was a light in the storage room but I knew I knew there was a light in the storage room I just didn't know that it was had a separate um, connection so it worked even when the rest of the flat was dark so I found that quite exciting and I'm really pleased I got a chance to tell someone about it because it's hard to keep interesting things like that inside. So he changed it and I said thanks. But I 
I just wish that I'd found out about this fuse thing in the past. Like, because at that point, I'd already chucked away three different toasters and a kettle with the same issue. So I had a kettle that every time I turned it on, the whole place would just go dark. Um, one one time I realised I was just had my eyes closed, so that was good. But but I ended up chucking away uh, one kettle and I think two toasters. I think it was over the last sort of year or so it might have been more than one kettle it was only one kettle at a time but I, I just figured that it wasn't working anymore so I just chucked it away because the inconvenience of having to keep going into the the dark cupboard and trying to you know fiddle around trying to find something that would turn on the lights again was just a bit too much and then when it came to the toast I, it was just yeah it pushed me over the limit of my frustrations because I needed I was hungry I needed the toast and sometimes you know, some people will say, well, you've got wheat bix you've got cornflakes, breakfast cereal, porridge. Why, why is such a big deal about the toast? Well, that's my business. I don't see why I should have to explain myself to others, especially when it's something as personal as toast. Other plug stories I have is the first iPhone I ever purchased. Well, I got it as a contract. And I plugged it in just to charge it up. And the plug exploded. Like, bang. It didn't explode as soon as I plugged it in because otherwise... I'd have been close to it. Um, but I I was sitting, I, I felt I plugged it in, and I was sitting the other side of the room, and suddenly, bang. And the whole of the plug was burnt. But it didn't affect the, I, the iPhone at all. It had no effect on the iPhone. I was very, very surprised. Very surprised indeed. I remember at the time thinking to myself, I'm very surprised at that. I really didn't expect that to happen. Very surprising. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other plug stories. I can't really think of much more. Although I do quite like the plugs now. The plugs just are safer. And I think because of my childhood, I've learned to be, to have a, a healthy respect for plugs of all kind. Um. I think the plug I didn't like most was the one that I stood on. It had its pins. It was just on the floor and I stood on the three pins. And me and that plug fell out for a long time. It did take a while for me to trust it again. It was unnecessary. 
and I think quite childish to to do that to me. Bit bit spiteful, bit spiteful actually. To set me up and trick me like that. I mean that was that was a shock. I remember thinking to myself, well that was that was shocking and a bit oh, unpleasant. But since then I've got on with most plugs. Haven't had a huge amount of problems with plugs of late. And I'm quite pleased with that because I guess one of my ambitions in life was to have a healthy relationship with plugs eventually. And I think... Hand on heart, I would say that I get on with 87% of plugs. So 87%, I get on just really well, very easily. Very, you know, it's very natural. There's about, I'd say, 10% that... Mm, it's, it's hit and miss. Sometimes get on, sometimes you don't. Just, you know, differ, different opinions. Sometimes, you know, in a, a lot of them I have to avoid talking about politics. It's just like, okay. But then there's that... Uh, I think it's three... There's three plugs that I would class as my arch enemies. And I I avoid them. I've actually moved to get away from at least one of them. I keep away from them. Because when you think the amount of plugs there are in the world, billions of plugs... Why why let like one plug affect you? Or in this case three. So I try to just keep away from them, but generally my relationship with plugs is fairly good. And I'd forgotten about some of that stuff until I decided to talk about it. Yeah. So I hope that was useful. And relaxing. So remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.